She's with. lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's like lives in a townhouse, like little tiny backyard. Wow. It's nice of her to let people come visit. Yeah. It is. For sure. I want mine to be like that, <laughs> my yard. Me too. I'd let people come. Oh, by the <laughs> way, one of my cardinal rules for going to somebody's house to look at birds, I always try to take a bag of seed. Like they're letting you in to look at their birds, so you might as well try to supplement and yeah, that's good great karma, idea. you know. That's and then <clears throat> so mm -hmm. housewarming gift for the birds. That's it. It helps everybody. So yeah, yeah. Never show up empty-handed. Very true. And then you know Bubba that owns <laughs> Wild Birds Unlimited that kind of. Oh threw that out the window so i sent him a gift card <laughs> just like a visa gift card like, i was like i don't want to buy you seeds since you own a bird seed sword so we missed oh that. yeah the calliope yeah. yeah i think it's still at its neighbors no uh, no we we, we dipped on it i mean it's probably still there but we, i haven't seen it uh, in a while oh okay yeah, I don't do Alachua or I only do like central, central Florida. Otherwise, I'd be in the car so much. So I'm like, if we don't start getting birds soon, though, I'm going to turn off all the ones around us and start going camping in my car. So. South Florida. I know. Yeah. I'm going to go down with Brian and Luis at some point this year. And just oh, that'd be really get all those birds that they get all the time that I have never gotten. So that sounds good. Yeah. That's what I need to do. Oh, it's seven. Seven. Okay. We good? Ready to start? We're ready. We mute everybody okay. else. Yep. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> welcome to Orange Audubon Society's bird chat for April the 8th. We're so glad you're here. And if you are from out of town even out of state, even out of country. We'd love for you to put in the chat where you're from. So we're gonna get started here. Okay, there we go. Um, we're gonna have announcements of plant of the week, a mystery bird. And then the program is Fort DeSoto spring migration with the bird chat team. Okay, come on. Upcoming programs. Next week will be our uh, monthly Orange Audubon program. It will not be on, uh, you won't get a link. You have to go to the Audubon YouTube channel and you can watch it live, preferably. Or if you're unable to watch it live, it will be recorded. And it's going to be a really interesting program with Ken Meyer on birds and hurricanes. Um, April 22nd will be our next bird chat. Jay watched with Maria Zondervan. It'll be a very interesting program. And on April 29th, we'll feature Oakland Nature Preserve, one of our local hotspots with Jackie Raleigh, who is the manager of the restoration. They've done a lot of work, so you'll enjoy that program as well. Okay, we have a big weekend. So this is our Birdathon fundraiser. It's one of our large fundraisers for our Orange Audubon Society. And there's two ways to participate. One is you can bird. What a fun way to help raise money, right? So you pick a 24 hour period between April 10th or April 11th. And you, in Florida, you record as many species as you can. You can go anywhere in Florida. Now, if you're from out of state, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you can help us out by, um, you can sponsor someone for Birdathon, or you can uh, just do a donation, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, those of you doing Birdathon, it'd be great if in addition to birding and sharing your checklist with us, also to get people to sponsor you. So you remember, I don't know, most of us remember walkathons, you know, you used to walk laps around your school track and um, people would pledge, you know, how many laps you did. Well, this is how many birds our whole group sees, total number of species. So someone can pledge, you know, a dime per species, a dollar, or just a flat rate. So up on the screen here, you can see um, 
the donate now button. If you want to just donate towards Birdathon, you can put your amount in there and, and, and there's a little memo and you can put this for Birdathon and it will be used for our future nature education center. Okay, another big date coming up. The Shurtop Florida Native Nature Photo Contest. The deadline is coming up very quickly, April 15th. Um, <laughs> if you go to our website, you'll see the information and the entry forms. And this was the first place winner from 2011 that was photographed at Fort DeSoto. Um, there's youth category, there's amateur and professional categories. And um, the, the main rules are featuring nature and nothing non-native, nothing man-made. So no roads in the background, no airplanes. If an animal is in grass, it needs to be native grass. It gets very, very specific. If a bird's eating a fish, it needs to be native fish. It makes you really look closely and hone your skills. So that is coming up. We hope you all participate and we will have a wonderful program in June where we feature the, all the participants and the winners. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to, to Debra and she's going to talk about the plant of the week. Okay, thanks, Kathy. Um, I picked Dune Sunflower because we're doing Fort DeSoto and that occurs there. It's um, in the Aster family, the Daisy family. And it's, next slide. It's an annual, so if it's a good one for your yard. Next slide, please. Um, and um, it's a good one for your yard. Uh, it's a water-wise plant. That's why, I, um, okay, this is from the Florida Plant Atlas, and it shows that there's two subspecies of it, the East Coast dune sunflower and the West Coast dune sunflower. And it's called, it's a native and it's endemic because as you see by these distributions, it occurs only in Florida. So that's what that means occurring only in. And FAC means it's a facultative wetland plant. It can do wetlands. I also think it can do dry pretty well once it gets going. And it's an annual. Um, so if you plant it in your yard and try to get it to spread, it really only does it one year and then, but it does, make seedlings so if you transplant them around and water them in that'll work and it blooms much of the year it's very sunny looking very pretty and it supports many pollinators that's doing sunflower that's it all right so now we're going to do the mystery bird and uh, this is bird you're going to see at fort de soto high up in the sky flying over, I think it looks almost bat-like from below. Um, why don't you guys, if you guys wanna put your guesses, it's not an anhinga, it's a lot bigger. Okay, Shauna's got it, it's a frigate bird, the magnificent frigate bird. So we'll go to the next slide. And those birds are very large and they pretty much soar up all over. They do summer here, we'll look, take a look at the distribution. The males are all black. The females have a black head and like a white chest. They do have a forked tail. They're very skilled flyers. They will eat um, like fish from the surface area, but it's interesting. One of the other things that they do eat is they chase other birds. I thought this was interesting. They really harass other birds until the birds throw up. I'm not sure if that's something that birds do and then they will catch that. And that's another way that they eat. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, next. So these, I was wondering one time I was at, the, at actually I was at Fort DeSoto, it was really stormy. And I'm like, what do these birds do when it's stormy? And I looked up and here they went flying past and then they went into the clouds. And I was like, I guess, you know, it didn't bother them that much. They're that good of flyers. The males do have that interesting throat patch um, that kind of when they display during mating to attract the female's attention. And if you are in Fort Soto and you wanna kind of stop by those, the Tierra Verde duck ponds, these birds will dip down. You can watch them kind of skim water and fly back up. It's very fun. Um, 
I tried to take a picture of that and I've, I'm afraid all I got was a trail in the water because I'm a little slow. So, but it's kind of fun to watch them. They come down. I think when I was there, there were like a hundred of them flying around the pond, taking turns drinking water. Next. So this is the distribution. We have them in the summer months around this area and year round, they're a little bit farther south. They do um, breed in different locations throughout this area. And they do spend most of their time in the air and above water. So, but Fort DeSoto is a good, that Tierra Verde, the pond, that area, I have seen them in that. I think there's like a boat club or a yacht club. I have seen them actually roosting in there. The immatures, as you can see, have a white head and the white chest. So that's another way to tell what those are. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead. I'll start introducing the park. Uh, it's about a two hour drive from Orlando, um, but worth it. Parking fee is $5 and it's a Pinellas County Park. Next. And the actual Fort DeSoto was built in 1898 to defend the Tampa Bay during the Spanish American War, but it never saw battle and was abandoned in 1923. And it was obtained by Pinellas County in 1948 and opened in 1962 as a park after completion of the Pinellas Bayway. Next. And it's total of 1,136 acres and it is five islands connected by bridges. Mullet Key, the main island, uh, Madeleine Key, St. Jane Key, St. Christopher Key and Bon Fortune Key. So if you study the map, you can see where those different parts are connected by causeways. Next. And why is it a migratory bird hotspot? It has to do with where the birds are migrating from, particularly those that are coming across the Gulf, those that have wintered in Central and South America and moved up through the Yucatan, ready to take off to uh, the, South, the Gulf Coast states. Those, if they meet a front, they're slowed down, they may fall on in the water and die. They may fall in boats, on boats or oil rigs, or if they're blown just right or can maneuver just right, they may hit the farthest west point of Florida, Fort DeSoto Park. And that particularly that's when we get a fallout when there's those conditions and, and they are exhausted and, and land there. Um, so that's why. Next. And so 345 bird species have been documented on eBird there. Next. And there's also nesting species on the beaches. American oyster catchers, least terns, snowy plovers, black skimmers, and Wilson's plovers all nest there. And Audubon Florida has programs to try to monitor the, them and, and protect the nesting colonies. Next. And we're, the way we're gonna do this is first East, East Beach, then the piers, um, then the ranger house, then the North Beach, and then Egmont Key. So let's start. Okay, make sure I'm, yep. All right, so I'm gonna start with even before East Beach. So when you enter into Fort DeSoto, um, past where you pay, there is, um, a large boat ramp area to the right. And then right across from there is a very small little boat ramp. And it always pays just to even as you're driving carefully, just to look because um, one year when I went, there was a red vestric merganser, American oyster catcher, and also a reddish egret all there together. So you just never know where in the park stuff will show up. It's just amazing. So I'm gonna start with East Beach. Um, it's probably a good place to start. East Beach um, is a, also a very popular place for windsurfing because of the way it curves out. And um, so early is good because those people haven't really gotten going yet. And so the us birders can go and see what's showing up. So if you notice here, uh, the East Beach faces right looking at the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Um, 
And there's usually a lot of collection of, of wading birds and shorebirds there. And here's a map of where you see East Beach. And there's two parts. There's the actual beach. And then there's an area with, with some parking and some playgrounds. And we'll talk about that. So here is um, the photo on the left shows you kind of how the beach curves out. And then there's a little tip of land. And um, that beach is usually good for just a variety of shorebirds. And, like you, you, and you can kind of pull off on the side of the road and park there. That's why we say go early because when the windsurfers and stuff are there, you might not find a spot to park. Um, and just look, you know, just walk up slowly and all kinds of shorebirds are there. Up here, I'll use my mouse, my cursor. Um, there are some, some like mangroves and stuff in there. And I have walked in there and birded and it's potentially could have some good stuff in there. So here are some birds um, that we've seen in there. We've had Wilson's plovers, which like Deborah said, do breed here. And in the winter time, semi-palmator plovers, which will uh, breed up north. And this shows um, after a long day of birding, this was in 2019. And we're like, well, let's just go check East Beach one, each, East Beach one more time. And it was just like, you know, you feel like a kid in a candy shop because there's just so many and they're just so beautiful. And so um, then you then you have to take your time and stop and look through and figure out what birds are there. So here were some that uh, when we did our last limited edition field trip um, to Fort DeSoto in January, there was a, breed, a breeding plumaged ready turnstone. There was these uh, short billed dowagers just all around. And then we get, so that's the beach. Then if you drive back, cause you can't go any further unless you have a boat, um, you drive back around the first parking lot you get to, there's a restroom and there's uh, picnic areas and there's a playground. And this is the East Beach picnic area and playground. Well, the first time I went to Fort DeSoto, did not, never been there before. I was with a friend and we didn't realize it was a fallout a fallout is when conditions are right and a lot of birds come in and they're really tired. They've hit some kind of, you know, weather and they're exhausted and they're low. They're on the ground. They're low in the trees. It's crazy. Um, and we just saw these hooded warblers just, you know, normally if you're trying to find them at Mead Gardens or something, they're hard to find. They were everywhere. And then there were thrushes. So here's a nice a wood thrush uh, that Lori Elijah took. Um, and there's a large mulberry tree as well by this playground with the mulberry fruits and you often will find tanagers, both scarlet and summer tanagers all over. You'll, um, Lori Elijah found this gorgeous bay breasted warbler, so that looks like it's on a fig tree. So that might have not been exactly in that place. Um, the, the day of the fallout, I couldn't believe, like very just low, these, these thrushes were in the playground itself by the play equipment, it was crazy. Here's a gray cheek thrush. And then here, often you're gonna see, this is where I saw, I saw a lot of my life birds there at Fort DeSoto. My first um, rose-breasted grosbeaks, they are, you know, when the mulberries are in, which they are now, they just, are in there like crazy. So there's your female on the left or an immature, and then the, the gorgeous male on the right, and they'll be just covered with the juice of the berries. And of course you'll have Orioles in there as well. And now I'm gonna turn it over to um, Susan. Unmute yourself, Susan. Sorry. <laughs> we're, we're gonna go back a little bit and go to the campground. The campgrounds, if you love to camp, this is a beautiful campground. The spots have some nice, um, lots of vegetation between them. I'm, as you can see, I'm a tent camper. But the really nice thing about the campground, and we can go to the next slide, is that at the campground, you're going to see the same, a lot of the birds, migrants will be there, the Nande parakeets. Um, in the one spot I was at, they had a nice hole drilled in the telephone pole that was carrying the electrical wire. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but I haven't been back. 
but the other thing is you can go early, very early to, you know, be like, go to the beach, all the beaches early. You can kind of stay late. It's really nice. Um, the campsites are about $40, but it's, they're beautiful. And, you know, the, being able to enjoy everything is wonderful. Um, at night, we heard the owls, we heard Chuck Will, Chuck Will Widows. Um, and then also, if you go for a little walk, they have like a dog bowl to water your dog. But every night that we went by, there was a yellow crowned night heron drinking out of the bowl. So that was kind of cool to see. They're very tame there, I swear, the yellow crowned night herons. They don't mind the people. Next. So the camp, um, the next is park headquarters. So if you were to go straight in from the campground, uh, that big building with the flag is called park headquarters. It's usually where all the groups meet because it's a real nice parking area. It's nice and central, but there's some really good trees. If you're facing head into that park headquarters on the right side, there's some really good trees. And I think the last time we were there, I didn't go this past year, but the year before those big trees were filled with these Tanningers, scarlet summer, buntings, male, female. I think we saw Orioles. We pretty much saw a little bit of everything in those trees. Um, the sand, there is a, I swear it's a resident sandhill crane. Every time I go to that um, building, there's a sandhill crane next to it. So I think in the morning, they kind of hang out there. But I also wanted to say, because the Nande parakeets are all over the park, but they also do have some monk parakeets in there in the park. So you may see those on a wire. Next. So if we continue down then, um, more going towards North Beach, we're gonna get to the Bay Pier and the Dog Beach area. So this is kind of looking at the pier. You can kind of see it way in the back. Um, uh, this is a great area. You're gonna see the migrants and the parrots up in this front section. Um, and we'll go to the next. But the beach itself, you're going to see a lot of the shorebirds. It's going to be the beaches are a little bit narrower. They have a little bit more um, seaweed on it. The birds can be a little bit closer. Um, as you can see, there's quite a bit. It's not the big flocks like on North Beach, but it's a lot of variety. I almost always see um, oyster catchers here. If I, if I don't see them somewhere else, this is where I go, make sure I can see one because I think they're so cute. But you can see we've got ruddy turnstones, black belly plovers, willets, ibis in the water, and of course, always lots of laughing gulls. So next. Also, this is an area, and you would think Dog Beach, you'd think, oh, dogs, I don't want to go there. But this is an area that has had a lot of specialty things. Like, although I did not get this picture from there, because every time I go to see the wimbrels that they say are there, <laughs> we can never find them. But, you know, they're there. There's also like uh, the great blue heron, great egret hybrid is around this area. So if you look and see a real light um, kind of great blue great egret you may see that specialty one um i also one time saw the reddish egret white morph so that was that's up on the left N next so the golf beach pier usually by the time i've gone to north beach and all the other ones i'm kind of tired so i don't do too much at the golf beach pier but it is a thousand foot pier that extends into the Gulf. So if you wanted to do pelagic with a scope, probably would be a really great place. Um, and this is just some of the birds that you would see there, the tricolor, pelicans, lots of turns and gulls. Next. So then the last one that I'm gonna do is the Arrowhead Picnic area and trail. So this is right across from North Beach. It's kind of a nice shaded picnic area. So if you're going birding and you're spending a day and you want to kind of get out of the commotion, this is usually a pretty good area. Uh, things are quieter there. It's not as busy as North Beach, but it's not that far away from there. There are picnic tables on the waterfront. Um, you may see the gray kingbird. I think I put, I had him somewhere else and I moved him here because this was the last place they did see him. The last listing was on the wires just outside the Arrowhead campground. So the gray kingbird is one of our nice um, birds 
of coastal birds that you really can't see anywhere else. So they're here from April through September. Otherwise they're in the Caribbean. Um, they are nesting during this time. So it's kind of a good, you can kind of see them zipping around. They're really fun flyers. Indigo buntings, the last time I went, it was, I think there was a sale on indigo buntings during migration. So they were in almost everywhere you looked had an indigo bunting. Next. But other birds, you're gonna see the migrants. Um, you'll see yellows, uh, painted buntings, black and whites, indigos. You will at the edge, because there is a sh ed water's edge, you're gonna see shorebirds. It's not the biggest edge, but there is a little edge. You'll see shorebirds. We've seen thrushes in there. The owls are in that trail. There's a trail back in there. It's a wooded trail. Um, unfortunately, I'm usually more going to the beach and I think if you want to see, see the owls versus hearing them, you probably have to get up kind of early and go to that trail first. So that's kind of like one of those challenges. So let's go next. And then this is one of the birds that Sam saw there. It's the golden wing warbler. This is on my list. So I'm, I'm ready to see this one. So. I'm hoping that it shows up this year. Next. Also, one of the other things, I was looking for a rarity. There is, if someone says the sandbar at Arrowhead Picnic, if you look out from the picnic area, there is a sandbar. It's only there on low tide, but it will be filled with birds. As you can see, I didn't have a scope when I took this picture. So I was trying to find something, but took this picture and realized, eh, it's probably good if you want to check out that sandbar that you will need a scope just to get it a little bit, little bit better look of that. Okay, and next, we're gonna do the Ranger House with Sam. Hey, everybody. Uh, so the Ranger House is kind of my favorite spot on the whole park. Um, I've only been a handful of times over there, but in this place is just pretty insane all the time during migration. Um, just so you know, I kind of did this shot so I can kind of explain the layout of the land for it. But when you come into Fort DeSoto, you come through the pay station and you basically dead in into an American flag. And if you take a right, you go down into the uh, Bay Pier parking lot, which uh, Susan just talked about. But And that's what you can see in the corner down there is uh, that parking area. And then those little, um, sand trails around around the perimeter and you can go to the beach and all of that but the yellow lines that i put in here are the actual chain link fence around the ranger's house because a ranger actually lives there um obviously they don't mind birders uh and you'll see that when you go there it is uh there are more birders than you've probably ever seen in your life but also more birds so it really works out it's okay <laughs> so but basically that chain link fence you can walk the perimeter of it all the way around um <clears throat> and it's great all the way around i mean we've seen last year i think they reopened and correct me if i'm wrong but i think if they reopened with covid like may 1st uh kind of limited um i think my last trip there was may 5th which was like a tuesday so i think they opened the friday prior but uh we had i mean you go through there and just in that ranger's house yard I had like 25 different thrushes um, between gray cheeked and um, Swainson's hermit. It's just, it's insane. And so I kind of marked a couple of the things on the front side, going towards the beach on the front side of the house, there's uh, there's bird feeders there and the rose breast of gross beaks seem to really love it. Um, I think it one, I think I have a picture somewhere of eight of them on that feeder, all males, all going crazy. It was, you know, for us in Orlando, we don't see those a ton. So that was a great. Um, the other little highlight on this is over where it says the fountain, there's an actual water feature. And um, if you want, you can go to the next slide. I think there might be some there, maybe not. Um, anyway, here's some of the birds you'll see around there. There's the trees through throughout around the ranger house are insane. You've got uh, mulberries as well as tons of different figs and Pretty much, I mean, it's the first time I went, my, I mean, my head was spinning. I had no idea. Half the birds I saw, I didn't know what they were. So um, anyway, so here's a couple pictures from there. Lincoln Sparrow, uh, Blue-Headed Vireo, 
Um, that Kentucky Warbler, actually, I got that at the um, North Beach picnic area, uh, but it's still close. And that was a lifer for me last May. It was a great bird. So, and it was actually chasing a hooded warbler around, and I got pictures of both of them. And again, I was blown away by it. So, next slide, please. Uh, so, here's some more birds from around the ranger's house uh, black throated green. Cape May, chestnut sided, uh, indigo bunting. Again, they're just, they're in all these fruit trees. The bugs are in the fruit trees. So then you get all the warblers eating the bugs. Uh, and then as well as like the tanagers and the buntings and everything else that are just destroying all the fruit. So next slide. So there's uh, a yellow warbler in the water feature I was talking about. And I mean, you'll go there and no matter, you know, you get there when it opens, and somehow by the time you get there, there's already somebody set up with a tripod and waiting all day. They'll sit and watch for birds to come into this water feature. And we've had warblers next to ducks. I mean, this is a small, I don't know, six foot across little water feature. I mean, it's not big at all, but the ducks will jump in it. The warblers are in it. Uh, there's a gray cheek thrush. Again, I've done laps around just around the perimeter of that fence that I showed you for two hours and every time you turn a corner it's a different bird so it's it's really a special place for sure um i can't recommend it enough especially during uh migration it's just uh it's you it's too good to be true like whatever we're saying about it when you get there you're gonna go oh now i see what they mean so uh next slide i may have one more on there i think yeah so here's more orchard oriole Again, eating, uh, we think that's a fig. Um, on the right, a black pole warbler. Um, again, eating a berry, which is kind of weird. So, you know, it's just, it's amazing. I mean, I, when I leave there, I spend just as much time looking up birds that I wasn't sure where they were. So, um, you know, it's a really fun place. So next slide. Yeah, that's it for me. So definitely don't miss the ranger's house. Hi, everybody. I'm Jack. Uh, I'm going to be talking about North Beach and Atback K. And I'm just gonna take a quick moment here to share my screen. And are you guys seeing a full screen of that now? I hope. Not yet. How about now? Yes. Yay. All right, so North, ba North Beach, uh, Atback K. First thing I like, I like to point out are all the parking lots here lined up one through 10. Um, this is where the majority of the parking is for the public and North Beach is a very popular beach for birds, thousands of birds, nesting birds, colonies of birds, and humans like to go there too, take their families and go to the beach. It's a very, very nice beach. And here's an aerial shot and then you can see down in the lower right, the lowest, uh, the, the last parking lot area. Here's North Beach itself. And then here's Outback K. And you'll notice how Outback K is looping around here. And also North Beach loops around. So this Northern section of North Beach was formed the same way that Outback Key is getting formed. Um, Currently, uh, Outback Key is a sandbar, and so there's really not much uh, enforcement of rules there. Um, once there is a natural land bridge between the two for a full lunar cycle, then it becomes a part of the state of Florida. And then whether state of Florida grabs it or Pinellas County grabs it, makes it part of the park, um, we'll see what happens there. You can also see in this photo the dark water up here, and that's the inlet where it comes out. There's a boat ramp of like 300 parking spaces. A lot of boaters come up, and they love this area um, around Atback K. As you leave this parking lot right here, you go by this sign, and no dogs on the beach because of all the birds there. Also, somebody put a little cat sticker there, which I thought was just really funny. Um, one of the issues is that the boaters that come around and anchor up here and, and 
enjoy the enjoy this uh, sandbar, they bring their dogs and quite often without leashes. So there's a big black skimmer colony there. Um, there's some really nice folks that are there almost every day with them. Um, I've talked with them, they're, they're very, very nice. There's another black skimmer. If you've never seen the bill head on, it's amazing that from the side, they, they look so big, but then head on, it's, it's like a knife. And this is typical what you'll see there. Um, these are royal terns and the, the ones with the black backs, those are all black skimmers. Um, and they're just, they're just thousands of birds there. And one of the cordon off areas, this is one of the signs there. And I thought it was a really good sign. It, it really is good at educating the public. Um, you know, the, the least turn is saying that, you know, that dogs and people scare us away from our nests, endangering our young. Um, so please keep your dogs off the beach. And then the, uh, the black skimmer is saying, uh, gulls and crows uh, eat our eggs and babies. Uh, please don't feed the birds on the beach. And there's enough natural predators there. This is a ghost crab, lower left. And this is a least turn, uh, I believe. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, no, it. Scaring it back into its hole uh, when I was there. And to get to Outback K, I usually park down here. I get there early in the morning because I'll go out and come back about noon and this whole beach will be packed with people and their kids enjoying the beach. So I'll park here, I'll walk out here and you've got to cross here and you're going to get wet. Now, whether you have to go up to your knees and get wet or whether it's just your ankles, eh, you're going to get wet. Um, you get least turns there, they will nest there. And if you've never seen them with their babies, it is just, it's just darling. Um, and the males are constantly coming in and out with the little minnows back and forth all the time. And if you look at that photo real quick, you see two birds, but there's really three birds there. There's two babies and the males are coming in and just, Giving, it, giving the minnows to the, the, the little babies and they're just gobbling them down. It's really amazing. Uh, piping plovers, which is one of my favorite uh, shorebirds. Uh, I, I just think they're really cute. They don't nest down here. They do achieve breeding colors. Uh, this one's tagged. Uh, if you do see tagged and you get pictures of tagged birds there, whoever tagged them would really like to know where you saw it and when. And they are constantly pulling these things out of the sand. Uh, there's all sorts of gulls there. This is a, a ring-billed gull. It's got a fish hanging out of its mouth. Um, I just, I was taking pictures of uh, the little shorebirds and then this guy showed up and you're like, sure, I'll take your picture. You've got royal terns there. Um, and it's the way they fly around, um, it's, it's not that hard to get a shot like this. It's just like every other presenter has, has said, it's just an amazing place. Um, there's more royal turns and just, you know, just hundreds and hundreds of them. I uh, got little snowy plovers and Wilson plovers. Uh, reddish egret, if you've never seen one of them hunt, you really need to go see one of them hunt. Uh, they're on both coasts and it's like a choreographed dance and it's really, really interesting to watch, especially if there's any kind of a breeze. Uh, yellow crown night heron um, on the left is mature and on the right is an immature. Actually, this shot of the immature I got at East Beach, truth be told. Uh, Sanderlings, both stationary on the ground, but then they'll take flight and fly like a big choreographed cloud. More photos <laughs> from North Beach. 
And even on a stormy day, Vegas, there's just all these varieties. They're all there. Um, it, it, you really can't go wrong there. Um, and this is another thing that happens. Uh, some people like to run through the group of birds and make them fly, but hopefully people are catching on that that's not really a, a desirable thing to do. It's uh, uh, the birds work hard every day uh, trying to survive. And uh, this is just getting them to burn up useless energy. And quite often the black skimmers, they like to lay flat on the ground and and nest, I mean, not nest, but just sleep and hang out. And uh, that's, that's what they do there. So, and then here is a link that if you do see a banded bird and you get the band number and a photo, uh, here's a website, www.reportband.gov. And again, whoever banded that bird as a small baby or they captured it somehow, they would really like to know where that bird is and how it's doing. Um, and uh, it, it's part of the, the, the citizen science that's constantly going on with birds. And next we have, I think, Deborah with Edmont Key. Okay, thanks, that was great. Um, Ed, go, yes, Jack, what were you gonna say? I was gonna unshare. Do you want me just to keep running yeah. the slides? I just have three slides. Okay, so Egmont Key is about 1.6 miles from Fort DeSoto, and you can take Hubbard's Marina Tampa Bay Ferry from the Bay Pier. I think it's about $40. And the whole island is 1.6 miles long, and much of the bay side and the southern half of the island is off limits as part of the Egmont Key National Wildlife Refuge. The whole island is 328 acres. Um, next slide. So if you take the ferry, um, the trip is four hours, three, hour, three hours on the island. Um, it has a 1858 uh, lighthouse and some military installations from the same era, I think, as the um, Fort DeSoto. And, but, um, there's not a tremendous amount to see on that version of the cruise. Um, you, a lot of some really big gopher tortoises live there and there should be some birds, but uh, I'm going to show you next what I was able to see by taking our own boat. Um, I think some people kayak out there 1.6 miles, but there's some big boats passing through and I think it might be not the best thing to do. So um, anyway, go next and I'll show you what we got to see with our own boat. And I learned that it, the Egmont Key National Wildlife Refuge um, was founded in 1974. They purchased the island and then they started enforcing, um, keeping people off it in the nineties. And from having no nesting birds, they have tremendous nesting colonies of skimmers, and um, royal terns, sandwich terns also, and laughing gulls. And it apparently is the, the largest laughing gull nesting site in Florida. And I had never seen this, what I pointed out with the arrow, the laughing gulls, very, very young, very dark, all together like that. That was very cool. And let me see, no, I don't seem to have the link I can show you the video, but um, go back. Um, anyway, it's actually on our YouTube channel. If you go back to the back of the early videos, I have one where we were just filming with our cell phone along as we boated along. It's just tremendous. And so most of you aren't gonna be able to get there, but at least you can be comforted to know that there is a place that is protected for these birds to nest. And that's all I've got. So are there any questions on, the, on any parts of the whole program? I had a quick thing and I forgot to mention, I put it in the uh, chat is it's 
people were asking about when migration starts and you know that kind of thing but it's i would suggest following if you're on ebird set an alert for pinellas county um that's where fort DeSoto is also and i found this out myself when i was trying to find something today when you type in uh, like an inner hot spot on ebird fort DeSoto needs to be spelled out and spelled correctly uh de soto is two words it's de soto and fort has to be spelled out you can't do ft period so just so you know if you don't like me i was kind of pounding my head against the wall like how is fort de soto not a hot spot and then i realized that i was spelling it wrong so anyway that's my two cents well someone wants to know perry wants to know when is the best time to visit what do you think sam I mean, I'm an early morning guy, and I mean, I'll leave my house at 4, 4.30 to get over there for sunrise. I mean, what time does it open? Seven, I think? Yeah, I think seven. I think, I seven. think it's seven. So, um, you know, I I do that and, like, just kind of get there and wait for the sun to come up. And, <laughs> and I, you know, usually I've got to come back and work, so I'll stay there for a few hours and then truck it on back. So... Obviously, if you can stay over there, I know Bob Cena mentioned they stayed at a great bread and breakfast over there. I don't know with COVID rules anymore what's going on, but uh, it's I'm a I'm an F, an early morning person, but like I said, I've been over there two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's still pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, Terry wants to know what time of year, and I'd say like starting now. Yeah, spring is the best, but fall is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. And winter. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great too. Yeah. And I've been there many times in the summer and it's still, there isn't all the warblers, but it's still really nice. Yeah, it's and pretty insane. To look for. For sure. So peak nesting season one. So peak I'm nesting fine. season. Yeah, peak nesting season. Mm -hmm. That's in the summer, right, Deborah? Like around June? Uh, For shorebirds? May, May um, that visit to the Egmont Key was June, so may, maybe a little earlier, May. <clears throat> By the way, um, it used to be the top bird hotspot before we took uh, Lake Apopka. Lake Apopka. <laughs> but still pretty great. And there's always something kind of fun to look for. You know, if you, when you go and it's not like warbler season, you can look for those. There's the great, the heron hybrid is there, you know, all summer, the great kingbird's there. And that's kind of a different bird. It's a more rare bird. So that's always fun to see. Um, you'll always see the great skimmers and, um, you know, so those are a great kind of what it's fun just to watch them feeding. Really great to see them feeding. They're just so entertaining. Right. And it's a super place to see the frigate birds. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen a frigate bird, you, you're going to really love it. Yes. And if you get a chance to stop by those ponds, if you see a big congregation of the birds, drive by those ponds and park and watch them as they come down and just skim for a drink of the fresh water. That's really pretty amazing to see those big birds. And the duck ponds are also really good in the fall for ducks, <laughs> migrating ducks. Right, Kathy? Yeah, it was filled with redheads. I can't even imagine. We couldn't really see it real well. It, it's not easy to look at. Um, there's not really a good place to park there. That's outside the park, right? To your That's outside, but there was, it was like wall to wall ducks. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a question. What is the most reliable place in the park to see the Nanday parakeets? You? What about the, the pier? <laughs> yeah. I think that, yeah, I think the, Gulf Pier, although I've seen them at North Beach too. And I had them behind uh, Arrowhead when I got the Golden Wing. They were nesting there in the, uh, <laughs> and what yeah. just happened? No, no, I was reading something. Oh. 
Um, yeah, no. And you'll hear them before you see them. They're so loud. They are loud. You will hear them. Definitely. Yeah, will be an issue. And it'll be interesting to see if that um, electrical light pole, they use wooden poles there, if it's still standing, because they had a nest when we were camping. They had drilled a hole, a nice little parrot hole nest into uh, the, I don't know if they did it or if they took it over. But no, they take those over because they don't, they, they can't. Yeah. A, it must have been a pileated then, but right. it's kind of fun. Right. And we didn't mention, but uh, I know Audubon, we were there in January, we saw um, scoters off the Gulf Pier. Mm -hmm. so, um, that's a good, winter time would be a good time to look for stuff like that. Bring your scope if you got one. And they also have lots of pairs of breeding great horned owls too. I know Susan kind of mentioned that too. So mm -hmm. those are good. Mm -hmm. That's in at the Arrowhead uh, area? I had them there. We were looking at the golden wing warbler and then somebody turned around and was like, oh, there's a fledgling great horned owl. And then the parent flew in. And then when we walked back a different way from where we were out in the woods, we passed the, the parakeets nesting and squawking. They were in uh, like the, you know, the sawed off palm trunks, so. Yeah, they do like those. And then over at that that uh, parking area at the big pier, there was in that field, like it was crazy. It was like a small tree, but I think it was three years ago, there was a uh, pair of great horned owls with it, at least two young, but I think it was three and they were kind of branching when I was over there. It was kind of cool to watch and they taped it all off just because to keep people away from it. So it was easy to find, <laughs> but it was right in the middle of that field there where that parking lot is. So. Okay, right, good. Any more questions? It, it is a great place to explore. What? Definitely plan to spend all day. Yeah, one other thing too, and it may sound kind of odd, but you know, there's a lot of people, locals and otherwise, that go there, especially around the ranger station. And, you know, don't be afraid to ask or say hello and, you know, what you see and that kind of thing. Because, I mean, that's how we found out about the golden wing warbler. You know, it was so a guy I was taught happened to be talking to, got a text from somebody else that said, Oh man, my buddy just found a golden wing warbler. And I was like, do you mind if I follow you over there? And you know, so it's, it's kind of make a community of it. Cause there's so many people, but it's, it's, you know, you just kind of do these laps around and, you know, you kind of start saying hello and hanging out and waiting for the birds to come around. So it's, it's definitely one of the coolest places I've ever been. So as far as the sheer number of birds and species, so. Definitely. I think one time the fountain at the fountain, there was a, I wanna say it was a prothonotory. Oh and yeah. You could often get there. to the fountain because it was like paparazzi, the bird yeah. paparazzi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A lot of photographers, a lot of birders. There are a couple benches there, but you know, some people bring a little camp chair and just sit there. And if you're like tired from birding, you can just sit there. And there is a one little bench, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of benches. Yeah. Usually, there's people on them, but um, it's a good place in the shade. And yeah, just watch the show. They just the birds just come in like crazy. And I don't know if anybody else was paying attention, but we're talking about warblers and there was just a good warbler reported in Winter Park today, just oh, now. Oh. What, what was that? Worm eating, one? Mary Piercy's yard, of course. Of course. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I hate to say it, but I heard one today. What? In my yard. Really? Well, not in my yard, in my neighbor's yard. Oh. But was, by the time I went in for the binoculars and got out, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> That's a good sign though. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good sign. Everyone check your yards. We had a, Lori and I, Paul had left us and we had a really rough looking warbler. And I mean, this thing looked rough and it was flying, like hopping around weird up and way up in a tree. And I took some pictures and of course we sent it to Paul and he was like, I think it's just a yellow rump in a molt and looks weird. Sure enough, we get home and I go through the pictures. It only had one leg. 
Oh no. And <laughs> so then we got better pictures and I kind of agreed and sent it back around, but it was like, you know, we were trying so hard for any warbler besides a perula that, you know, I think Lori thought it was a weird looking um, black throated green and I was trying to turn it into a young, weird looking Cape May. So there you go. All right, and Mary asked about the fountain. The fountain is, is by the ranger's residence. You just walk the trail past there. You just follow the birders because the birders will walk around yeah. the ranger's house and then you walk out to the fountain and then you can walk to the beach there. That's where we didn't put pictures in because <laughs> they're hard to identify. But um, my first year there, flycatchers just, just had come in. You know, They just came in off the gulf. And they're just sitting in little short trees. You know, they're exhausted. So you give them their space, but it's really amazing. Yeah, I think it's five bucks to get in for to parking. If you camp, you get in free. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> but it is expensive to camp there, but it's really nice. It, nice. If you're and you're if you're camping, can somebody visit you? Drive in and visit you in your campsite? Five bucks. <laughs> well, actually, the campsite's outside of the gate. It's before the gate, just before the gate. Right. So you right. camp, and then you put your little receipt in the window, and you just drive up and you wave. You know, they wave at you as you go through. So, but I imagine they can visit you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So imagine you get warblers in the campground too. Yeah, right? it's actually kind of fun. You know, it's a beautiful campground. I've never been able to reserve one on the water, but everywhere else is there's most of them are really nice. So. There was something super weird, like a really good warbler was in the campground last year in yeah, May. I so I can't remember what it was, but now that you're talking about that, it made me think of it. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense because it's very wooded. There's lots of, you know, lots of nice trees there and palms. It's actually on a little, if you look at it, it's a peninsula. And one side's right on the water. And then the other side's, the other side's on the water, but there's this grassy area that they mow. So you don't really look at the water. You kind of look at those short scrubby trees that grow on the edge of the water, so. But it's still nice. Either either place is nice, you know. Yeah, it's a great park for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she said Vermilion Warbler was near the boat ramp last year, maybe in the campground. I didn't see it, but saw pictures of it. Ooh, I've never even heard mm. of it. Flycatcher? Maybe yeah. that's what, maybe a Vermilion flycatcher? Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And actually, at one time, they even had on a North Beach, did you see they had an owl, burrowing owl? Did they what? really? Yeah, they had a couple, it was like, I think it was just one day. But wow. it was like, wow, if it stays, I'm going over and out. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> but they had pictures of it, so it was definitely a burrowing owl. You never know what you get. Never know. I mean, I was sitting on the beach in that yellow crown night here and just walks down the beach between all the people in their bathing suits. <laughs> Crazy. All right. All right. Anything else? Well, thanks everybody for coming. Right. We hope you participate in our birdathon if you're Flor from Florida. Oh, it doesn't matter do where you live. It doesn't matter, you know. What you see, you might be the only person that sees a particular species. So send us your list and we'll add it to our total. And we hope that maybe you consider donating to our Birdathon too. In honor of bird chat. Yes. All right, so I think that's a challenge, everybody. So do I have to do anything weird besides this sheet? No, you just send 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 uh, your, your list. list to Kathy. Yeah, and actually, I send it to Teresa. She does all the compiling, all the all the. So, if I wanted to do like a dollar a bird or something like that for myself, I can do it. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. And, and you send your bird list to me. Uh huh. It, it's on on the 
website here. I'll send you my email. No, I didn't know what your email is. Oh, no, I mean, Ann, someone, I put in the chat somewhere Annie... in the chat. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, know you know, I know that. I was like, um, I was emailing you earlier. I know. I know that. Um, okay. I'm stuck. 